All right, this video is going to be on finding zeros of a polynomial function. And the way that we're going to find the zeros of the polynomial function, at least for now, uh, the way that this video is going to try to do it is this video is going to try to do it by factoring. Now there's a couple things that you want to know before we kind of get into it. Uh, there's one thing that you want to know before you find the zeros, because sometimes we don't know what we're looking for. Uh, so to kind of figure out what you're looking for, the biggest thing is you want to look for the degree, because the degree, which is the highest exponent, the highest exponent is going to tell you a few things uh, that you want to know. Most importantly, is that uh, the degree, uh, let's say, whatever it is, uh, the number of real zeros plus the number of imaginary zeros should total up to the number that the degree equals. So if the degree is 4, then all our zeros combined should add up to four zeros. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're finding as many zeros as we need to and not any more and not any less. So let's give it a shot. f of x equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 36. We're going to factor this uh, so that it uh, can be easier to find our zeros because it's hard to see it uh, just uh, as you look at it. And so since it's of that quadratic form where you have x to the fourth and then x squared and then nothing, we know we can factor it with x squared uh, and x squared and we just say what multiplies to negative 36 and adds to negative 5. So what multiplies to negative 36 and adds to negative 5? That would be minus 9 and plus 4. So it equals f of x. And so now we can keep factoring because we do have one situation where it's difference of squares. So it'd be f of x equals x minus 3 and x plus 3. And the x squared plus 4 stays the same because we can't factor that. Now we want to set each part equal to 0 to find our zero. So when would x minus 3 equal 0? When would x plus 3 equal 0? And when would x squared plus 4 equal 0? So we're going to solve each one. We'd add 3 to both sides, and we'd have x equals 3. Subtract 3, so we'd have x equals negative 3. And now this is where we have to do a little bit of work. Subtract 4, and so we'd have x squared equals negative 4. Square root both. And so we'd have x equals plus or minus, and you may be thinking we can't square root a negative, but we can. Um, we just have to use i, the imaginary number, which stands for the square root of negative 1. Uh, just as a quick review, a simple way to simplify this is to break it up. Think of it as the square root of the number times negative 1. Uh, the square root of 4, hopefully you can do, times the square root of negative 1, which is just i. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. And so x equals plus or minus 2i. And if you count it up, we should have four answers. x equals 3, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 2i, and x equals negative 2i. So we're good. So the zeros of this function are plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 2i. All right, let's look at another one uh, where maybe you would have to factor a little bit differently. Um, so... Let's go with this example, f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. And since it's got four terms, uh, in order to factor it, we want to factor by grouping. And so f of x would equal x squared times x plus 3. The next GCF is a negative 1 leave us with x plus 3 and so this really factors 2 take out the x plus 3 and leaves us with x squared minus 1 
Let's just say that you forgot that x squared minus 1 could be factored and you left it like this. If you still set them equal to 0, you're still going to get the answers. So x plus 3 equals 0 and x squared minus 1 equals 0. So x would equal negative 3 and x squared would equal 1 and we're going to square root both sides. So x equals plus or minus 1. So we'd have positive or negative 1. And if you look at it, all three are real and that's okay. So our zeros are plus or minus 1 and negative 3 and all of those would show up on an x-axis. Let's look at one more example um, where it's a little bit trickier, a little bit different, kind of a combination of everything. So let's go with f of x equals uh, x to the fifth power plus 6x to the third plus 8. And so if you want to find the zeros, we're just going to be factoring. Um, in the, oh, 6x plus 8x. Sorry, I left off an x there. So uh, first step to factoring is to take out the greatest common factor. So that would be an x, leaving you with x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 8. And then you can factor this one by saying, well, it multiplies to 8 and adds to 6. And those two numbers would be 4 and 2. And the x would still be there. Can't factor it anymore. And so since we can't factor it anymore, we're going to set each part equal to 0. Uh, this greatest common factor, since it has an x, you have to set that equal to 0 also. But it doesn't require much work. The answer is just x equals 0. The next one, x squared plus 4 equals 0. And we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. We've seen this already. x squared equals negative 4. And we're going to square root both sides. So x equals plus or minus. And then the square root of 4 is 2, but the square root of negative 4 is 2i. Then this guy over here, take x squared plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides. x squared equals negative 2. We're going to square root. And then x would equal, whoops x would equal plus or minus and when you can't actually square root the answer uh, we just leave it as the square root of 2 and we put the i in front so plus or minus i root 2 and take a look at your degree one last time the degree is 5 and I have 1 2 3 4 5 answers and we know we found them all alright have a great day